Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Vale SA, ticker symbol V-A-L-E, Vale. Vale is the world's largest iron ore miner, and currently they're paying out a dividend yield of about 10.5%. So that, coupled with the fact that they have a P.E. ratio of only 3, and they're trading pretty close to their 52-week low, are reasons why we're looking at the business today. So currently, Vale is trading for $13.05 per share. Year-to-date, their stock price is down 7%. Over the past year, their stock price is down 27%. Over three years, they're actually up at a rate of 3% compounded annually. Over five years, they're up at a rate of 4% compounded annually. Over 10 years, they're down 4% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, they're up at a rate of 3.5% compounded annually. They peaked at an all-time high, similar to other iron ore miners, in May of 2008. Then they came crashing down in the global financial crisis, hitting a low in December of 2008, and then sharply rallying. From that sharp rally, They've been down since then. They actually hit close to an all-time low in January of 2016. And then they've been up nearly six to seven times since then, even with their recent decline in stock price. So Vale is trading about $2 over their 52-week low, which is down about $8 from their 52-week high. They are a large business. They have a market cap of 313 billion Brazilian reals. In US dollars, that's a market cap of 62.5 billion USD. So for some background about the business, Vale is the world's largest iron ore miner and one of the largest diversified miners, along with BHP and Rio Tinto. Earnings are dominated by the bulk materials division, primarily iron ore and iron ore pellets, with minor contributions from iron ore proxies, including manganese and coal. The base metals division is much smaller, primarily consisting of nickel mines and smelters with small contribution from copper. The company was formerly known as Campania Vale do Rio Doce and changed its name to Vale SA in May of 2009. Vale SA was founded in 1942 and is headquartered in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Vale based off of their business fundamentals. This analysis is actively evolving and it will continue to improve and get better over time. It's a work in progress that's an opportunity to learn in public. So with that said, let's get right into it. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for businesses that earn twice as much as that, we're building in some margin of safety for ourselves based on the overall quality of the business. In addition to that, over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So Vale has increased their returns on capital in all five of these years. It's more than tripled over this time frame. They hit a peak of 54% returns on capital last year. And over the last 12 months, this has actually come down a little bit, but it's still well above average. They're earning about 43% returns on capital in the last 12 months. So averaged out in the last five years, Vale is earning about 29% return on capital in an average year. That is twice the metric we're looking for and four times better than an average business. So this is a massive check to start off on metric number one. Keep in mind that their returns on capital are going to be highly dependent on commodity pricing overall. And as the largest producer of iron ore, they're going to be heavily dependent on the price of iron ore. And so commodity markets tend to be cyclical in nature. This has been a pretty good period for commodities. So there is some uncertainty in commodity pricing going into the future. That's something that you're going to want to be an expert on and have some sort of insight into before thinking about any sort of investment here. Anyways, with that aside, this is a check on metric number one, a very strong start so far. Metric number two here, we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing, meaning either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric is going to be an X. So they've increased their revenues by over 50%. Their earnings have actually quadrupled over this time frame, and their free cash flows are up more than two and a half times. So this is massive growth here for Vale. This is another strong sign on metric number two, 
and is our second check in a row. Metric number three, we're building off of the previous metric. Here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business. We want their earnings per share to have grown over the last five years. As we learn, their earnings have about quadrupled over this time frame, and we get to see here that their earnings per share have actually gone up slightly more than this. So this is gonna to signal to us that Vale has been buying back some amount of shares over the last five years. This is important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. When a business buys back shares by decreasing the number of shares outstanding, they're increasing your total ownership percentage in the business, which as witnessed here, is gonna increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're gonna be entitled to without you having to lay out any more money. We love it when a business is buying back shares at reasonable valuations, preferably when the business is trading below its intrinsic value. So this is strong growth here, and this is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. We witness the same thing here, that their free cash flows per share are growing slightly faster than they've grown free cash flows. Again, we get cued in on the fact that they've been buying back shares over the last five years. Over an extended period of time, both earnings and cash flow should be about the same for a business. And if we would see huge discrepancies here with earnings way higher than free cash flows, then it could potentially be some sort of sign indicative of fraud or aggressive accounting. That's not what we're seeing here in the case of Vale. So it looks like we likely don't have anything to worry about. The other great thing here is that metrics three and four in combination with their high returns on capital really signal that the business has done quite well over the last five years. It's easy for a business to grow these per share metrics if they're not worried about their returns on capital. And indeed, many companies chase growth at all costs. To see a business that's earning both well above average returns on capital and is able to grow these per share numbers is indicative of some very strong economics in the business. Again, as a commodities business, Vale is going to be heavily dependent on the price of iron ore overall, but they've had a pretty nice go of things over the last five years. Next up, metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that they've generated in the past five years. So at the end of last year, Vale had about $6 billion in net debt. Currently, they have about $9 billion of net debt, so they've added some debt here. However, in the last five years, they produced more than $55 billion of free cash flow. So that is plenty of free cash flow coming into the business to be able to pay off all of these debts and then some with plenty to spare left over. So this is important because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business, and it can be used to pay down debt make acquisitions, reinvest back in the business, buy back shares, or pay dividends. So ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is going to be worth. It's great to see that they're not overly levered here and that their cash flows are free for other uses. This is a strong sign to see here for metric number five, that the business is not overly levered. Overly levered businesses are at the highest risk of doing worst during economic downturns. It's good that we're not likely at a high risk here. This is another check on metric number five, and we are perfect so far through five metrics. Our sixth and final metric, we want their average cash flow relative to their total enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. So if this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury. We're using total enterprise value here because it is more reflective of economic reality than market cap alone. Enterprise value takes into account both a business's market cap as well as their net debt position. So it's more as if the business were a private company. Vale currently has a $70 billion total enterprise value. And as we learned in the last five years, they produced $55 billion of free cash flow, which means that in an average year, they're producing $11 billion of free cash flow. So when we divide their $11 billion of average free cash flow by their $70 billion total enterprise value, that is gonna give us an average five-year free cash flow to total enterprise value yield of about 15.7%. So that is more than three times that metric we were looking for. They have a very strong free cash flow yield relative to their enterprise value right now, which is about four to five times what the risk-free rate is currently. So they are very, very highly cash flow generative. This is a check on metric number six, and we are a perfect six for six on the select six analysis. Keep in mind that just because this is the case, this doesn't mean that you're gonna run out and buy the business right now. This type of analysis is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and it's not financial advice. Instead, it serves as a holistic and beginning understanding to take all of these metrics in holistically and determine for yourself 
whether it's worth your time to do homework here and learn more about the business independently. One of the best ways you can do that is by diving into the company's 10Ks. You can get a history of the business by doing so. You'll learn, you'll learn about challenges and opportunities the business is currently facing and what potentially lies ahead. And you'll get a sense for the competence and integrity of management overall, as well as understanding their long-term philosophies toward capital allocation. Once you get that background history of the business, I'd also recommend reading through some of their recent earnings call transcripts to get a more up-to-date, nuanced picture of how the business is performing and how management is planning for the future. Then finally, here we're looking at Vale's dividend profile. As mentioned, currently Vale has a 10.5% dividend yield, so that is one of the higher yields in the market right now. It is also more than seven times the yield of the S&P 500. So if you're looking for businesses that pay out dividends, Vale could be a good candidate. It's important to not make the mistake that a lot of people make and blindly chase dividend yield. Instead, do what we're doing here and stop and look under the hood of a business to determine whether their dividends are supported by their free cash flows. In the case of Vale, they've increased their dividends per share in all five of these years. And more importantly, they've been able to increase their free cash flows in all five years as well and produce enough free cash flow to comfortably support their dividends and their dividend increases all five years. Just to really pound it in, Vale is a commodity business. They're the largest iron ore company in the world. So their cash flows are going to be heavily dependent on the price of iron ore relative to how much it costs them to operate their mines. So they could potentially get a low cost producer advantage that would help them have a competitive edge, but their cash flows are going to be pegged to this commodity going forward. And it's likely that their dividends are going to be pegged to their cash flows as well. Made a slight mistake here. They actually increased their dividends to $0.38 cents per share in 2018, and then they brought that back down to, in 2019. Then after that, then after that, they about 4 x their dividends into 2020. Not quite dividend growth in all five years, but it was pretty close. And again, really not a lot to worry about here. Their dividend looks healthy and supported by their free cash flows. But again, those free cash flows are going to be dependent on commodity pricing. So in summary, Bali checks the box on six out of six metrics. They are a perfect select six business. Vale earns significantly above average returns on capital, averaging about 29% returns on capital over the last five years. They've also dramatically grown their revenues, free cash flows, and earnings over the last five years. In addition to this, they bought back shares in this time period. The combination of both of those has increased their per share metrics as well. Then they are not employing a lot of debt in their business, and it looks like they are comfortably able to support their debt loads given the amount of free cash flow that they've been generating. We also learned that they have above a 15% average free cash flow at a total enterprise value yield right now, which certainly puts them into a select category as potentially having one of the most attractive yields of any business in the market currently. So it does look like it could be worth your time to dig in and learn more about the business here. Also, Vale is paying out a 10.5% dividend yield that has complemented the returns over the last five years. So again, just because their financials look good on this beginning holistic analysis, this type of analysis is not financial advice and it is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before making any investment, consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. They'll be able to give you professional financial advice and recommendations if you have questions during your research. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Vale SA, ticker symbol V-A-L-E, Vale. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Vale with me, and have a great day.